How do you protect yourself against highway robbery when it's the cops doing the robbing? A small town in Alabama with only 1,200 residents brought in $1.2 million in revenue thanks in large part to traffic tickets and seizures. And there's a town here in Virginia with the million dollar mile that has the same problem. We'll take a look at how this is possible and how you can try to protect your town from suffering the same fate. I'm attorney Andrew Flushi, and this channel is about defending your freedoms. Subscribe for a new video every Tuesday. Brookside, Alabama is an old mining town of about 1,200 residents. In 2018, Brookside hired a new chief of police, Mike Jones. Jones isn't just the chief of police, he's the entire police force of Brookside, Alabama. Chief Jones decides that he wants to try to increase public safety and help the town's coffers while he's at it. In two years, Jones goes from being the only police officer in Brookside to being the chief of a department with nine full-time officers. The chief fuels that growth by writing tickets, a lot of them. The Brookside Police Department finds so many violations that it goes from towing only 50 cars in 2018 to towing 789 cars in 2020. The town of Brookside's total revenue goes from $589,000 in 2018 to a whopping $1.2 million in the year 2020. Ticket and seizure revenue generated by Chief Jones's police force increased by 640%. By 2020, the town even employs two drug sniffing dogs to help with their drug efforts and seizures. The police aren't shy about what those dogs are really looking for, money. They're so bold as to name one of their canines cash. As more motorists begin to get caught in the chief's dragnet, more motorists fight back the town and its police force become the subject of several lawsuits. But that doesn't deter Chief Jones. He says, I see a 600% increase. That's a failure. If you had more officers and more productivity, you'd have more. The mayor is on board too, likely enamored with his town's ballooning budget. The mayor is asked about the lines of people who line up outside the courthouse to fight their tickets issued in Brookside. And the mayor says, everybody's got a story and 99% of them are lying. When the media starts to unpeel the onion of Brookside's policing practices, things begin to unravel for Chief Jones. He ends up having to resign as chief of police of this sleepy town in Alabama, leaving behind his precious tank. Sadly, we have a similar story right here in Virginia from a few years back that involves more than just the police department. Back around 2010, Hopewell, Virginia became famous for its million dollar mile. The town has one tiny segment of Interstate 295 that runs through its borders. At the time, Sheriff Anderson decided that he needed to begin policing that section of the interstate aggressively. With the extra fines that he generates from that enforcement, he hires more officers to do more enforcement. The town even increases their courthouse security fee that is paid by the defendants for processing all of those tickets. They rack up hundreds of thousands of dollars simply in court costs alone. When asked about the million dollar mile, Sheriff Anderson boasts, it's not the million dollar mile, it's now the two million dollar mile. If people want to keep traveling at these high rates of speed, if they want to keep this up, then I plan to make it the three million dollar mile, if at all feasible. Keep in mind that many of these high rates of speed that Sheriff Anderson is so upset about are simply going 81 miles per hour in a 70 zone, 11 over the limit. Under the law at the time, that triggers a reckless driving ticket, which is a class one misdemeanor and a mandatory court appearance. In 2013, Hopewell had a total of 18,845 traffic and criminal cases filed that year. There are only 22,951 people in the entire town. Around that time, the Virginia legislature changes the law so that the state will actually get its own little piece of the pie from the Hopewell million dollar mile. But that doesn't deter old Sheriff Anderson from continuing to write tickets with abandon. Sheriff Anderson retires in 2014, and the new sheriff who takes over doesn't improve the situation at all. His deputies continue to keep writing tickets at a similar rate. But finally, in 2018, when Sheriff Kephart takes office, the total number of traffic and criminal tickets in Hopewell drops like a stone. It goes down 50% to 9,662 cases filed in 2018. So what can you do to protect yourself and your town from these profit patrols? 
First, if you're traveling through an unknown area, it makes sense to research ahead of time to be aware of speed traps or areas you may simply want to avoid. And frankly, anytime you're traveling in an unknown area, I recommend you be especially cautious about watching for speed limit signs and watching your speed. You may be used to going 9 or 10 miles an hour over the speed limit in your home county, and maybe your local sheriff's office doesn't care about that kind of thing. But then you find yourself on the interstate in some little backwater town that's generating lots of revenue for ticketing people doing just that. I recommend checking with your friends on social media, or you can search places like Reddit who may have great tips for areas to avoid or to be especially careful about that speedometer. You can also use apps like Waze on your phone to alert you if there's a speed trap ahead. They're not foolproof, but they can certainly give you a heads up sometimes. The other thing people might consider is a radar detector, but be sure you're aware of the laws where you're traveling. In Virginia, radar detectors are strictly prohibited. Second, you need to vote. Elections have consequences, and all of these chief law enforcement officers are ultimately beholden to us, the voters and the citizens, where they enforce the laws. Chief Jones in Brookside was probably pressured to resign by the city council once the town was receiving too much bad media attention due to its policing practices. And the Hopewell Sheriff may have lost re-election to Sheriff Kephart in part due to his excessive traffic enforcement policy. In both of these towns, elections and voters likely change the policies at play. Finally, if you're in a backwater town and you get pulled over, it's especially important to know your rights and flex them. To arm yourself against the tricks police use to get you to talk, check out my next video. I'll see you there. And of course, don't talk to the police.